Speaker, we are before you today with a heavy heart to address a matter of utmost concern, the tidal waves destruction in Keta, Angola, Ketu South constituencies, and the alarming lack of ad adequate lack of adequate government response to the crisis over the years. Mr. Speaker, our fellow citizens in Keta, Angola, and Ketu South constituency are in enduring and toll suffering since 1940, and the lack of adequate government response to this crisis is historical and sad. Mr. Speaker, in recent years, the frequency of tidal waves destruction and its impact on the communities along the coast have increased significantly, but government apparent indifferent to the plight of our people is deeply troubling. Mr. Speaker, between January 20th 2017 and February 2024 alone, a total of 16 tidal wave destruction have occurred along the coast of Keta, Anglo, Ketu South. The, the distribution of these occurrences are 2017 up to 20, 2014 is about three, and then as I speak to you, a day before yesterday and today, tidal wave destruction is still ongoing in our various constituencies. Mr. Speaker, the development gains in, this, in, in the area are easily being wiped out by the disaster. In recent years, storm wave destruction have left our coastal community in a state of distress and displaced, and about 25% of the people. Mr. Speaker, as I speak to you, a community called Fuvemi, a town in Ango, no longer exists. This is evidence of the severe impact of tidal wave destruction. Mr. Speaker, the loss of community, com lost, the, the loss to the community implies a profound loss of shared property, values, culture, and heritage, highlighting devastating consequences of natural disasters on the communities. Mr. Speaker, the persistent cycle inflicted economic loss and damage over the years ran into more than four, four billion U.S. dollars. The damage in this year, in the year 2021 alone, which saw the highest number of occurrences in recent years, is estimated to be more than 20 million USD. Mr. Speaker, families have been forced to flee their homes, livelihoods have been shattered, and the very fabric of their lives have been torn asunder. The first hand information on the image of the devastation is heart wrenching and it is our solemn duty as a representative of the people to demand emergency response and appropriate action. Mr. Speaker, regrettably, it appears that the current government has been at best luggage in the response to the crisis. The situation in Qatar, Anglo, and Qatar South call for an immediate and comprehensive government intervention to provide essential relief support to the affected residents. Yet, we are confronted with an alarming sense of complacency and a lack of agency in the government approach to this disaster. Mr. Speaker, historically, Qatar, Anglo, Qatar South are probably one of the few areas in Ghana that have lived daily adverse impact of climate change and had bad industrial development policies. Construction of Tema Harbor, Akosobo Dam are part. No other group of the, uh, of, of the nation is more vulnerable to climate change than low-lying areas in Keta, Anglo, and Ketu South. Mr. Speaker, in fact, over the coming years, the combination of these intensified sea waves and ongoing accelerated sea level rise is expected to have a dire impact on only underpin efforts to achieve sustainable development goals, but also pose a threat to inhabitation and safety of Keta, Anglo, Ketu South, and each community, and expose and even development practices promoted in Ghana. Mr. Speaker, all the green financing and the climate funds secured by this government is not reaching the people of Keta, Anglo, and Ketu South. The youth of these communities are organizing to petition the global community on their own. 
Mr. Speaker, we cannot ignore the voices of the people of Keta, Anglo, and Ketusab. We are crying out for help. Who are pleading for swift action and assistance? It is our responsibility to demand answers from the government regarding its response to this catastrophe. We need a transparent and accountability in the allocation of resources in the execution of relief items. Mr. Speaker, we implore this House to call upon the government to prioritize the need of people of Keta, Anglo, and Ketu South. Mr. Speaker, we demand a concrete and immediate plan of action, action that includes immediate humanitarian aid and rehabilitation of infrastructure. Mr. Speaker, we demand action that includes long-term measures like continuation of grind, also known as sea defense. Mr. Speaker, we demand action to enhance the resilience of our coastal community from Anglo, Keta, Ketusab, through the World Bank facility known as West African Coast, Coastal Area Resilience Fund, action that includes investment in Keta Lagoon. Mr. Speaker, the government must not remain adamant to the suffering of our fellow citizens. Mr. Speaker, the, this parliament has the power has the power to hold the government accountable and to ensure that the people of Keta, Anglo and Ketu self receive the assistance so desperately deserved. Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I urge every member of this parliament to put aside partisan differences and let us unite in solidarity with the people of Keta, Anglo, Ketu South. Let us demand accountability, action that Keta, Anglo, and Ketu South rightly deserve.